On Wednesday night, I preached on one of the most unusual subjects I've ever spoken about. The text was from Proverbs 16 and the 32nd verse, where the Word of God says that he that is slow to anger is better than the, than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. At the close of that service, our young architect, who's in from Atlanta, sitting over here on the right front seat, brought to me this complimentary scripture. And is that which I wish to speak about today as the Lord helps from Proverbs 25 and 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Both have to do with the ruling of the spirit, the ruling of our own spirits. But the reference to the city is different. In the first case, he that ruleth his spirit is better than he that taketh a city. But the reference to the city here is not like that at all. And I find that interesting in the writings of Proverbs. For it says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. It's a sad state of affairs we find ourselves in when we are not able to control our own spirit. Matthew Henry says about this passage that whenever we cannot control our own spirit, all that is good goes out and forsakes us. And all that is evil breaks in upon us. Simply in the matter of not controlling our own spirit. Remembering this principle when I studied psychology, I remembered that criticism is a very bad defense mechanism. And any defense mechanism is designed to make one feel better and to elevate oneself. But criticism always destroys someone else. Any immediate value of criticism is short-lived because it also destroys the one who gives it. That principle is involved here. Defense mechanisms as a whole keep one from obtaining their goal. People who are injured psychologically drive away the very thing they want the most. Everybody wants to be loved. But if you're filled with defense mechanisms, especially that of criticism, you drive away that which you want the most by the, by the operation of that defense mechanism. Because if you love someone or somebody or a fellowship or 
the world at large, that is, if you really want their love, criticism drives them away. Matthew Henry says, all that is good goes out. An unruled spirit destroys friendship. Often I've heard people complain through the years, these folks are not friendly. Most people who say that are speaking about themselves rather than the folks that they think they're speaking about. These folks are unloving. In most cases, if not, well, I just leave it at most. In most all cases, the person doing the speaking is the one unloving. And they criticize and they hurt and they tear apart. So that they drive away any friendship that is felt close in love. Because he who is friendly will find others friendly. He who is really loving will find others loving. Besides, there's a principle involved. That if in my presence you criticize somebody else, I know I'm next. I know that I'm next. Because if you criticize anybody in my presence, you'll criticize me in somebody else's presence. It's a fact. It works that way. And so, the man that doesn't rule his own spirit tears down the walls of protection for himself and drives out all that is good a spirit that is controlled a spirit yeah, that is controlled is basic to a successful home life marriages for the most part are being destroyed because somebody cannot rule their spirit The Bible says, be slow to anger, not quick to anger. By the way, there's another principle involved. I'm not giving a psychology lesson, but it simply comes to me that whenever you and I accuse someone else, especially in a case like this, what is happening is we project upon others the sin that we're committing ourselves. There's such a twistedness within us that what we accuse others of doing is exactly the way we are. It's principle of psychology. Besides, I said here the other day, and I thought of this when I was preparing this message, that if you have a judgment in your heart and you let it loose through criticism it makes it very difficult then to really love that person that you've criticized you have an impediment there that's very hard to remove And so much of the reason why we can't love each other as we ought to love each other is simply because we've uttered a criticism. And somehow when we do that, we invite those who help the devil, we call them demons, to attach themselves to us. And we find it almost impossible to love that person as we ought to love. In the whole process, not being able to rule our own spirit, we drive out that which is good. Now, I'm perfectly aware that a man and woman that is filled with the love of God will have the kingdom of the devil against them, and, and Michael sung about that. I'm aware that there's nothing, no stronger spirit and power on this earth than the devil. But greater is he that is within you 
than he that is without. To yield to an unruly spirit is to drive away from us all that we need and all that we desire. That's another way of saying what I've said before. Studies tell us that most murders are com that are committed are not premeditated. And that's a good argument against capital punishment. Although I'm for capital punishment. Nevertheless, most people who murder do it in a flash of anger. They're not premeditated murders. Criticism is a first cousin to murder. And the truth of the matter is, you and I have been murdering people all of our lives. And in doing so, we have not ruled our spirit, and we are as a city, broken down without walls. Driving out all that is good, and opening our lives to all that is evil. Serious, isn't it? Let me go back to this point. The spirit that is controlled is basic to a successful home life. We can get in some awful tests in our home life. But how wonderful it is if we're always able to rule our spirit. Usually the thing that sets off the battle is the tongue. And most often when it's in operation, in critical operation. Remember this. We're not dealing in abstracts. When I say that you drive out all that is good, that means you're driving out persons. Because good is not abstract. And so half of all American marriages are ending in divorce. Mostly because the spirit cannot be ruled. Well, all that is good goes out, and all that is evil breaks in. To yield to an unruly spirit is to yield to a foreign spirit. A spirit that's not intended for you. A spirit that's not intended for me. May I go back to something I've shared with you from time to time? I sure want to reverse this. I've heard so many say, well, you know, when in a moment of beauty, in a moment of anointing, in a moment of truth, in a moment of, of, uh, of love... You do something that shines forth and it blesses us all. And often I hear you say, that wasn't really me. And I say, wait just a minute. Wrong. That was you. Somebody sold us a bill of goods that our nature in essence, is like the devil. It is not. We've only been saddled with his nature. But through salvation and through sanctification, this foreign devil can be put to flight. You're not ugly at all. 
You're beautiful. And when you act right, that's you. And when you act wrong, that's not you. Admitting that our spirit is central and all of our behavior is controlled by either one spirit or another spirit. Because we can't have two masters. Therefore, we are either motivated by a wrong spirit or motivated by a right spirit. We can be tempted to issue forth wrong words and wrong behavior, but we don't have to. It depends on who we belong to. Because he that committeth sin is of the devil. And he that practices righteousness, right doing, right saying, right behavior, beautiful behavior, behavior that blesses and words that edify, that person is of God. No man can do without God because the truth of the matter is you and I have been infected, but that's not really us. Adam didn't look like that and Eve didn't look like that before they doubted God and chose to try to be godlike. They were godlike and didn't know it. They chose to know things that they didn't need to know and understand things that they didn't need to understand. When they ate of that fruit. By the way, I'm aware that the Bible says it doesn't say that it's an apple, but I trust that you won't have a contentious spirit with me. It's, it's so funny whenever you speak to some of the ministers or otherwise, I say, doesn't he know that that wasn't an apple? I know that, but don't you know that I may just want to find out how you're going to act by saying an apple? Sometimes when God's blessing and the fire's on my head, I like to preach like an old country preacher and I'm liable to let apples fly. fruit but think how beautiful and pure they really were and when Adam loved Eve and Eve loved, Eve loved Adam and named all the animals and acted right in the garden Adam didn't turn to Eve and say that's not like me I'm not really like that and she didn't turn to him and say well I'm not like that, uh, that. well then Adam who are you like and Eve, who are you like? Can we then say that when the devil came into their lives and corrupted their nature and caused thorns and thistles to grow, that this is what they were really like? God forbid. He that ruleth his spirit is like Christ, for he ruled his. And he that ruleth his own spirit is like God, for he has ruled from everlasting to everlasting and never once lost himself. And he that ruleth his spirit is like a city that hath walls. Now in the early days, this meant quite a bit to the reader. Why? Because a city that didn't have walls meant that the barbarians could come in and take the citizenry at any time they please. But, uh, but, because you see, that was the only method. Now the atomic bomb can level everything, or the hydrogen, or the neutron. And even, even in earlier days, there were great machines invented and, and weapons of warfare that perhaps would diminish the reality of this illustration. But we have to take ourselves back to realize, realize what it's like. Even yet, dear ones, if we put up a wall around our home or a fence around our property, there is some security. Because unless a person is very determined, he won't come over those walls, you see. Sometimes if he's not a professional, he won't, uh, he won't proceed. Just a... a, 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 a 
child or a young person that has an unruly spirit, that very wall will stop him, you see. But if you go back to years ago, a wall would stop those. Especially if that wall had on top of it watchmen who sounded the cry that the enemy was approaching. And all the citizens within prepared themselves to beat the enemy. And a good wall city could not be taken except God do it. And he did that at Jericho. The Lord caused the walls to fall and the, then the citizens could be taken, ravished. Our lives are like that. See, isn't it something? That when we don't control our own spirit, we take away our protection. We take away the protection and in come all those things that we don't want and out goes all those things that we do want. And the more that we don't rule our spirit, the more we lose what we want. And the more we rule our spirit, the more we gain. In patience possess ye your souls. Words are killers. And sometimes it just takes one more word to destroy a relationship. Because all along, the barbs of criticism have been damaging and damaging, building damage. And oftentimes we wonder why a friendship or relationship is broken when we just spoke one word, but we forgot all the thousands of words that went ahead of that. All the hundreds of words of ill speaking. And of course, every one of us seem to rationalize that we're not the fault, it's somebody else. But the Bible says here that we're at fault. That unless we rule our own spirit, we become as a city broken down without walls and we're open for all